Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the video series History of English Literature. This is the fourth video of the video series. I have already discussed Old English period and I have already discussed the first two parts of the Middle English period. This is the last part of the Middle English period. This is known as the Age of Revival. Basically, the time period of this age starts after the age of Chaucer and it ends before the Elizabethan period. The duration of this age is from 1400 AD to 1550 AD. Now, basically, the first question comes to our mind is why it is called the age of revival? Here, revival means revival of old literature of Greek and Roman language. And how this rebirth or revival of Greek and Roman literature happened, I have already discussed in the video, What is Renaissance? I have given the link in the description box. Please check it out. Let us see the historical background of the age of revival. The first major incident was Reformation. Reformation was a religious movement. The Reformation started by Martin Luther, who was a German monk. It came to England from Germany. The followers of Luther were called Protestants. This movement was against the rigid practices of the Catholic Church and the corruption among the clergymen. The second major incident of this age was arrival of the printing press. Printing press was invented in Europe by Gutenberg in 1450 AD. William Paxton brought it to England in 1476. He printed many English works including Chaucer and Mallory. The most important incident of this age is War of Roses. This was a series of English civil wars for the control of the throne of England. It was fought between the House of York and the House of Lancaster. The symbol of the House of York was White Rose and the symbol of the House of Lancaster was Red Rose. For this, the war was known as War of Roses. Henry Tudor, also known as Henry VII, defeated and killed Richard III. Thereby, the War of Roses came to an end. Henry Tudor from Lancaster dynasty married daughter of the York. So their son Henry VIII had the blood from both Lancaster and York. So the people of England became very happy. With Henry VII, peace returned to England. He also encouraged education. Then Henry VIII who was the son of Henry VII, became the next king. He is well remembered for his six marriages to get a male child because according to them, the female child are of no use. So it was Henry VIII who was responsible for bringing the reformation to England. He fought with Pope over the divorce. He declared himself the supreme, of the he supreme head of the church in England through the act of supremacy. After Henry VIII, his son Edward VI became the king at the age of nine. It was during the reign of Edward VI, uh, England became a Protestant country for the first time. Then Mary, the first daughter of Henry VII, became the next ruler. He reinstated Catholicism and executed many Protestants. For that, she is called Bloody Mary. Then finally, in 1558, Queen Elizabeth became the Queen of England and thus became the Golden Period of Literature, which is known as the Elizabethan Period. Despite being a Protestant, she allowed both Catholics and Protestants to live in peace. Now let us see the literary works of this age. Development of Bible. In 1450 AD, Johann Gutenberg published Gutenberg Bible, which is the first printed Bible. William Tyndale translated the Hebrew and Greek Bible into English. Before Tyndale, Wycliffe also translated Bible in English in 1381, but it was banned. The Age of Revival showed growth in drama, which was a preparation for the Elizabethan period. There are main four types of drama. The first one is mystery plays. These were based on stories of Bible. The second one is miracle plays. This focus about the life of saints. The third one is morality plays. These are the allegorical plays that promoted virtue. Everyman is an example of morality play. The last one is interludes. These are the short dramas based on political and religious issues. John Haywood popularized interludes. Poetry. 
Most of the poets of this age imitated Chaucer. Their poems are hardly original, those are of poor quality and voluminous. Major poets of this age are John Skelton, John Lydgate. In this age, Scottish poets also followed Chaucer. Some of the famous Scottish Chaucerians are William Dunbar, Robert Henderson. In this age, prose were more promising than poetry. Major prose writers were Thomas Moore, who wrote Utopia, Sir Thomas Mallory, who wrote Mortality Arthur. This is a uh, story about the Arthurian legends. And another major prose writer was Erasmus. From this age, women also started writing. The first major women poet is Christian de Pizan. She was the first woman, to, first woman to take writing as a career. This is really inspiring to think that a woman in 15th century showed the courage to take writing as a career. The second important woman poet is Marguerite Kemp. And last but not the least is Julian of Norwich. He wrote, she wrote Revelation of Divine Love. One of the most famous lines from this work is, All shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. This line was used by T.S. Eliot. Age of Revival begins with wars, unrest and chaos, but it concludes with a settled dynasty and reformed religion. It is true that this age is not a period of great production, but it was the preparation for a great age to follow, that is the Elizabethan period. So that's all about the Age of Revival. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please like, comment and share with your friends. And please subscribe my channel to stay updated. Thank you.